This is the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV. Inside its felt, understated body is a telephoto lens that lies sideways. The lens has tiny elements that can move freely back and forth to zoom in and out. No other phone can do this. First, let me get this out of the way. Sony lent me a pre-production sample of the Xperia 1 Mark IV. The software isn't final, and since that's the case, this video is purely an in-depth first look as opposed to a full review. Most people would be surprised to know that Sony still makes phones. But if you're a creative type, a photographer, filmmaker, gamer, or audiophile, Sony and its Xperia lines of phones are after your heart, creativity, and wallet. And what's great about the Xperia 1 Mark IV is that it got a significant redesign and is packed with features no other phones sold today have. So let's talk design. Now you might be looking at this phone and saying, hey, Patrick, what are you talking about? It looks exactly the same as the previous Xperia 1 model. Look, I admit, the family resemblance is undeniable. And overall, it still looks like a thin, black, tall rectangle. But the sides are flat, reminiscent of the iPhone 13. The build feels more solid. Gone is the Google Assistant button, which Thank you, Sony. And what's left is a power button that doubles as a fingerprint reader, a dedicated shutter button that you can use as a shortcut to open the camera, and a volume rocker that doubles as a zoom rocker. The Xperia 1 Mark IV still retains the headphone jack and the no SIM tool needed SIM and micro SD card tray for expandable storage. The phone is covered in Gorilla Glass Victus and has an IP68 rating for water and dust resistance, meaning it can be submerged under a beater of water for 30 minutes. Oh, and in the US, it comes only in black. The lack of a flashy design or heck, even colors shows you where Sony's priorities are, which is pretty much everything else on the phone. It has a 4K display that has 120 hertz refresh rate. No other phone has this. Now, yeah, last year's Xperia 1 Mark III had a similar display, but I found it to be rather dim, especially in sunlight. The new display is 50% brighter, and it's something you, you just, you have to see in person because everything looks sharp and crisp and bright, and the contrast is good. And then there are the cameras. And all of the cameras got an upgrade this year. And I want to start with the selfie camera, which now has a new larger 12 megapixel sensor. And if you can get past some of the skin softening tools, which you can turn off, it takes good photos. Compared to the iPhone 13 Pro and Pixel 6 Pro, the Sony gets close in terms of image quality for selfies. But the iPhone is still slightly sharper and the Pixel still does a slightly better job separating the foreground and background for portrait mode selfies. You can use the selfie camera in the Video Pro app to record 4K video and get access to slightly more advanced controls than basic video. On the back, there are three cameras. An ultra wide angle camera with an f2.2 16 millimeter equivalent lens, a main wide angle camera with an f1.7 24 millimeter equivalent lens with optical image stabilization, and a telephoto camera with an f2.3 to f2.8 85 millimeter to 125 millimeter equivalent lens with OIS. And get this, all of the cameras have new sensors with faster readout speeds, meaning they can do multiple calculations and processing in fractions of a second. And that's not just the main camera. You can shoot 20 frame per second burst of photos with auto exposure and autofocus with all of the cameras. Let's go back to the telephoto camera. Other phones have telephoto cameras and even ones that are mounted sideways inside the body like a mirror with a tiny periscope. Last year, the Xperia 1 Mark III had a dual zoom lens on the telephoto camera where the lens element would physically move between two positions. This year, it's not limited to two focal lengths between 85 millimeters and 125 millimeters or 3.5 times to 5.2 times magnification. It's all optical zoom all the time. There isn't any digital zooming or cropping happening and it's truly remarkable. 
Of course, having an optical zoom between 3.5 times and 5.2 times magnification allows you to have the absolute best image quality this phone can output without any degradation that comes with digital zoom. And combine that with Sony's eye autofocus, all comes in handy for isolating your subject and keeping them in focus, like this photo of a dog. It also affords you a great number of options for recording video so that you're not seeing a radical change in image quality while you zoom in and out. By the way, you can digitally zoom past 5.2 times magnification up to 15.6 times or the equivalent of 375 millimeters. Obviously, image quality takes a hit, especially in medium and low light shots. Now, take a look at some of my favorite photos and videos that I shot with the Xperia 1 Mark IV. That 4K 120 frame per second video you're watching, I think is really impressive, especially when you shoot in good lighting. But how does all this compare to two of the best phones you can buy that also have excellent cameras? I took a number of photos with the Xperia 1 Mark IV, the Pixel 6 Pro, and the iPhone 13 Pro to get an idea. The biggest takeaway is that in good light, even medium lighting, like these photos of a vase of flowers that I took indoors, photos from all three phones look good. The photo from the Pixel looks the sharpest, but I love the way the Sony renders the colors. Here are some shots of a bunch of motorcycles that I took outdoors. The photos from the iPhone and Sony are very similar, but the Pixel boosts the shadows more than the other two. But it's when things get dark is where we start to see the biggest difference between the phones. The Xperia 1 Mark IV doesn't have a night mode. It could take an okay low light photo like this shot of a cocktail in a dim bar, but take a look at these photos of a street that I shot handheld. The photos from the iPhone and Pixel, which both use night mode, look so much better. The Sony's photo looks soft and muddled. Check out all the noise reduction going on in the telephone wires. I'll leave you one last comparison. These are some videos I shot outdoors on a Sunday morning. All three videos look good. The Pixel has some moiré, also known as screen door effect, going on with the bricks and telephone wires. The iPhone's video looks good, but the colors are slightly exaggerated from what they were in real life. Like that sky was not that shade of blue. And the Sony's video looked best in my eyes. All this to say is that the Xperia 1 Mark IV is impressive, but Google and Apple's strides in computational photography still give them an edge in terms of image quality. The Xperia 1 Mark IV has three apps focused on photos and videos. There's Photo Pro, Video Pro, and Cinema Pro. Video Pro is starting to become one of my favorite ways to capture video on a phone. I can get into minute details, customize settings easily, or just enable an auto mode to override everything. While image quality is extremely important, I do think these apps help Sony stand out compared to the iPhone and Pixel or even the Galaxy S22 Ultra. After about a week with the phone, I'm impressed with the camera so far. One quirk of this software is that it has trouble focusing at 5.2 times magnification. I didn't notice it too much, but Sony has a fix in the works for its final version. Let's talk about performance. The Xperia has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip with 12 gigabytes of RAM and comes with 128 gigabytes of storage. It has 5G and supports millimeter wave, sub six and C band. One upside to all that power and the 4K display is that gaming is a blast on the Xperia. Game Enhancer lets me customize controls and settings for each game, though there is a downside. Let's talk about the battery. Combine all that power, 5G, and that brighter 4K display with 120 hertz refresh rate, and this phone is very thirsty in terms of power. Luckily, Sony included a larger 
5,000 milliamp hour battery. And so far, battery life feels improved over last year's Xperia 1 Mark III, but it's still shy of other flagship phones. Now, I look forward to testing the phone more in depth once we get final software. But when I was filming this video, I spent about 30 minutes playing games like PUBG Mobile, Alta's Odyssey, and taking photos and recording videos with the phone while connected to Wi-Fi, and the phone felt hot to the touch. I don't know if this is because of the software not being final, but it dampened my enthusiasm nonetheless. Another wrinkle I experienced is with the Music Pro app. Now this is a new app from Sony, which can provide studio tuning for vocals. In the video that Sony shared with me, a singer records her vocal track on a windy beach and a windy rooftop. Music Pro essentially applies a combination of noise reduction, de-reverb, and studio mic simulations to her track. In the demo that they showed me, it's pretty impressive. Take a listen. Sadly, the new music app wasn't ready for me to try. Honestly, next to the cameras, Music Pro could be the biggest new feature on this phone. Last, let's talk about price. The Xperia 1 Mark IV is $1,600. Yes, 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 that's $300 more expensive than the $1,300 Xperia 1 Mark III and the Xperia 1 Mark IV doesn't even come with a USB-C cable or a power adapter in the box. Now, in some ways, the innovations of technology inside this phone, I feel justify the $1,600 price. But for the majority of people, myself included, $1,600 for a phone is just out of my budget. I'm more likely to buy a dedicated camera. But for people who can afford the price, the Xperia 1 Mark IV is filled with technical innovations and software that caters to creative people who like to customize. Sony is running a pre-order deal where you can buy the Xperia 1 Mark IV and get a free pair of Sony WVF-1000 XM4 True Wireless earbuds, which have about a $280 value. Personally, instead of the headphones, I wish Sony had offered a bundle that included the shooting grip and remote control and tiny magnetic external monitor that lets you use the rear cameras like a selfie camera. So that's all I've got. If you want to pre-order the Xperia 1 Mark IV or learn more about it, check out the links in the description. But now I want to hear from you guys. What do you think about the Xperia 1 Mark IV? Does the specs and features justify the price? And are you considering getting one? Throw your thoughts in the comments.